He says, Beloved, do not think it strange concerning the fiery trial, which is to try you as though some strange thing had happened to you. But rejoice to the extent that you partake of Christ's sufferings. You know what he's saying there? He's saying if you suffer for the Lord, your sufferings are actually Christ's sufferings. They're the sufferings that he has made for you. Because in order to know God, you must know him in the fellowship of his the fellowship of his suffering. That when his glory is revealed, you may also be glad with exceeding joy. If you are reproached for the name of Christ, blessed are you. For the spirit of glory and of God rests upon you. And on their part, he is blasphemed, but on your part, he is glorified. That's why James says in chapter one, my brethren, count it all joy when you fall into various trials, knowing that the testing of your faith produces patience. He's saying that your faith being tested makes you more like God. God is patient, is he not? He wants you to be more like him. So he's going to test you. So all you people who just received the Lord and got baptized and, or maybe just rededicated your life to the Lord and you're wondering what's going on in your life and why everything seems to be imploding when you thought everything was going to get so much better after you received the Lord and got baptized and all those things. Let me tell you first and foremost, that is a false doctrine. God never promises that your life would be cushy in him. He promises you here that your life is going to be full of trials. But he says those trials are there for a purpose. They're there for a purpose to make you more like him. Don't give up. Expect that the trials are going to come. Your expectation is the problem. Don't expect that God is just going to make everything amazing in your life. He can do that. Sometimes he does. But for most of us, including myself, it's like he's got to like beat me into submission. Almost. He got to take all the other things away from me to make me pliable enough that he can mold me into what he wants me to be. Otherwise, I'm too rock hard. So he's got to do in me what he needs to do to make me more like him. This is what he says in Hebrews 12, starting in verse 3. You guys should read this section. This is good. Any of you who are going through tough, tough things right now, feel like you're being disciplined by the Lord? In this section, it says that he who the Lord disciplines, he who the Lord chastens, is the one that the Lord loves. And when he's disciplining you, it means he's addressing you as his son. He's addressing you as his child. Because if the Lord didn't care about you, he wouldn't discipline you. Just like if a parent doesn't care about their child, they don't discipline them. But if you do care about your child, you discipline them. Knowing that you will make a greater weight of glory in their life. And so the Lord does the same thing to us. He who he loves, he chastens, he disciplines, knowing that that makes you better. It makes you more like him. So, when James in chapter one says, count it all joy when you fall into various trials, James understands what God is doing in those trials. That first of all, if you're in a trial and you're being persecuted, 
for righteousness sake, it's because God, number one, is addressing you as his child. And number two, he's making you more like him. So he says, if you're going through a trial, if you're going through tribulation, if you're going through any type of affliction whatsoever, it's because God wants to make you more like him. God wants to do a great work in your life. He's addressing you as his child. He wants to conform you into his image and he wants to get the things out of your life that are weighing you down and anchoring you so that he can do in your life what he wants to do with it. That he would cleanse you from all unrighteousness, that you would walk righteous and holy before the living God. And that you could teach others to walk righteous and holy before him as well. He desires your heart. He desires your life. And Christian, let me tell you, he's going to get it one way or another. You know, like when a little child coming out of the store and they're just kicking and screaming and, you know, it's like dad's got them in the arm like this and they're just like, ah! <laughs> is it helping them? Is it giving that child what they want? No, it's only making things worse for them. Because now dad has to be more severe. Instead of walking out hand in hand, he got to lift that thing up and say, come on, you're coming with me. Look, if you're trying to go against the Lord, he's going to lift you up and say, hey, look, I love you too much to let you go after all this stuff. So whether you're kicking or screaming or not, we're going out of the store, okay? It's much easier on you to just submit to the will of your father knowing that he loves you and walk through this life with him hand in hand. You will be better off and you will be better for it. Trust him in his sanctification process in your life. It doesn't feel good. But you can't see the things happen in your life like have happened in this church over the last month if you're not walking with him. You want to see God use your life? You got to walk with him. You want to see him do amazing miracles that you never thought possible? You got to allow him to take some things out of your life. You got to walk by faith sometimes when it doesn't make sense. The heart of our God is to do his work in you. He wants to do the work in you so that he can do the work in other people through you. That is the heart of the Father. May many, many, many people, more than can be counted, come to the Lord because of what God did in this room here today. Pray. Pray for the church. Pray for the people. Pray that God would do his work in all of us. That even though we're seeing crazy things happen and the enemy is not happy about what's going on in this place, our God is still greater and our God is still going to do the work and he's faithful to complete the work because he started the work and it was his work in the beginning. What he started in the beginning, he's going to see through to completion. And he's going to do it in each one of us.